New data from the federal government show 2018 was the fourth hottest year since scientists began keeping records in 1880. According to NASA and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, temperatures last year were more than 1.4 degrees above the 20th century average. The report found the Earth has been warming for decades, and the hottest 20 years have all happened since the mid-1990s. Scientists say all those years were exceptionally warm, with slight differences driven by weather patterns. CBS News contributing meteorologist Jeff Berardelli joins me now to discuss all this. Jeff, great to see you. you know, great to be here. I think at this point, most Americans agree that global warming is a problem, right. which is you know, an advancement from where we were maybe a few years ago. Right. But what is new then about this information? That's the problem. It's not all that new. We've come to expect every year to be near record-breaking. Uh, five out of the last five years have been the warmest on record. Uh, and it just goes to show you that as long as we keep spewing uh, CO2 and, and fossil fuels uh, into the atmosphere, we're going to continue to see warming, and it's going to continue to make for extreme weather. And so where are you seeing these warming trends playing out in the strongest way? Like which areas of the world are experiencing the most extreme warming? So, you know, this is really interesting. I'd say 20-something years ago, I looked at a climate change model, and it had, and it showed that, you know, a couple of decades from then, we were going to see tremendous warming in the Arctic. And I remember thinking to myself, if it turns out that we see a lot of warming, double, triple the amount of warming in the Arctic, then you can be sure that climate change is real because the computer models knew that it would happen. It's mostly happening in the Arctic. The reason why is we're losing a ton of sea ice. Sea ice reflects the sun's rays back into the atmosphere, back out into space. And so that kind of acts as a refrigerator and it cools us down. As we lose that ice, we, we end up with a feedback loop. We tend to heat the Arctic even more because the ocean is exposed now. The ocean is darker, and you know, you know this if you wear a dark shirt, the sun is absorbed. So what's happening is its own feedback loop, and unfortunately, I think that will continue to increase. The graphic you're looking at right there is actually ocean heat content, and that's an important one because that keeps hitting records every year. That has not gone down since 2015 and 2016. It just keeps going up. It's like a bank account. And again, to reiterate what you said, the reason this is also important is the ocean and that sea ice specifically yeah. is sort of a global temperature regulator, it right? Is. And it without is. it, are we then spiraling? Does it happen faster and faster, the that, warming? That's exactly what it is. It's a positive feedback loop. The less ice we have, the warmer it gets, the faster the Arctic uh, gets out of whack. And it's throwing a lot of our weather patterns uh, out of whack. So we end up with more extreme weather in a lot of parts of the mid-latitudes as well. It doesn't just stay in the Arctic. Now, what happened in 2016 that caused it to be the hottest year on record? So there was an El Nino. And the way that we measure temperatures, when you see these reports that say it was the third warmest, it was the fourth warmest globally, uh, what we're talking about is air temperatures and also sea surface temperatures. So literally the skin of the sea surface. Uh, during that year was an El Nino year, and the sea surface temperatures in the equator were extraordinarily warm. It was one of the strongest El Ninos ever. That released a lot of heat into the atmosphere, caused the temperatures to spike in 2015 and 2016. Since then, the temperatures have come down. But what's really important... What and What is the causing that? Because, I mean, obviously, we're still, they're still elevated, but they're coming down. So what is causing that? Because of the way we measure the heat. The heat hasn't gone away. This is the important thing. What... You often don't hear in these surface temperatures when we talk about them is what's happening in the deep ocean. It's something called ocean heat content. That sets records every year. So all this extra heat that humans are, are you know, that, that, that's being trapped because of greenhouse gases is actually going into this bank account of the oceans. Every year we hit another record as far as the oceans go. And that is the 800-pound gorilla in the room because the oceans are 71% of this earth. They're about 99% of the habitable uh, life on the earth. And so it's the oceans that dictate climate patterns. To be honest with you, I, I, I wish that we used ocean heat content a lot more than we use uh, air temperatures because the oceans regulate the climate. Well, that's a great suggestion. Maybe yeah. we will be using it more and more we're, as we go forward, and it's so, yeah. it's so important. Now, 2018 saw so many weather-related disasters. Can you confidently draw that link between global warming and these weather-related disasters? I think it's important to remember that everything that happens happens in a new world. Uh, the climate has changed since 1900 or before that. And we have, in the background, about 
uh, two degrees Fahrenheit of warming, about one degree Celsius of warming. So everything that happens in the weather happens in the background of climate change. Now, in the case of this year, there were 14 billion dollar disasters three years in a row. We've seen about double what we would normally see. The big issues, Hurricane Michael, Hurricane Florence, Hurricane Michael, uh, it, it intensified rapidly when it hit the coast. Likely some of that was spiked by climate change. Florence produced a ton of rain, likely at least a portion of that. We don't know if it was 10 percent. We don't know if it's 20 percent or more was likely due to climate change. And when you look out west, there's been a ton of research that wildfires are made worse. And wildfire season is three months longer because of climate change, because of more extremes, because of drought. Right now, California is getting pummeled with a lot of weather. Right. So it's, it's going to grow a lot of vegetation this spring and this summer. And then all of a sudden, likely it won't rain for a couple of years in California. It'll go back into drought and those fires will spark up. So, Jeff, everything that you're saying, <laughs> I have to say, it, it sounds pretty bad. I mean, it, it, you're not giving us a lot of hope here. Yeah. I mean, what needs to happen to stop this cycle? You know, that's a, a really long question, you know, because there's a lot of things we need to do. I think we need to demand from corporations. We buy products from corporations that are green. We need to demand our corporations produce green products. We need, need to demand our politicians vote for uh, legislation that helps with climate change. But it also starts with you and me. I mean, it's really important that we bring up our children um, to understand that the resources of this world are limited. And the more we use them, the more we burn fossil fuels. I think fuels. this new generation yeah. understands it. The question they is do. whether that's too Fast late. Enough. That's that's the question. My children <clears throat> understand it. You know, we're not going off a cliff here. So what I mean by that is a very, it's kind of a gradual process. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people say, well, we have until 2030. And it's true. If we want to limit warming to 1.5 or below, we need to reduce our emissions by 50 percent in 2030. Right. However, so carbon emissions still the number one problem. Yes, right? that and one. methane is becoming a bigger issue because we're re we're releasing a lot of it from permafrost. But the important thing to know is, yeah, I mean, it is still somewhat of a process where it happens over time. It's not like all of a sudden we reach a two degree threshold. Yeah. And things are horrible. So we, we can start now and we can start making change. I would love to continue this discussion yeah. with you. That's another segment one. that we've got to do. We have one more question for you before we let you go. There is a winter storm heading to the Midwest. What yeah. can you tell us about that? So this is going to be both an ice and snowstorm. The worst of it's going to be later tonight and especially during the day tomorrow. It will end tomorrow night. And it's going to be affecting places like Oklahoma City all the way up through Wisconsin and Minnesota. I think the worst weather is going to be the ice that happens in places like Green Bay, Milwaukee, mm -hmm. north and west of there from Des Moines to Minneapolis and north of that into northern Wisconsin, I think we're likely to probably see six to 12 inches of snow. Boy, just so you can see where the, the ice is, the pretty colors, yeah. the, the pink, not so pretty to drive in. Really dangerous, really treacherous. And then obviously the snow is in the blue there. Just after the polar vortex, more snow and ice for, for those folks. All right, All right Jeff Verdelli, thank you so much for that.